Fluffy Mine by Echo Rainstorm. Tags. Fluff. Angst. Hurt comfort. Isik Midoriya has a quirk. Isik Midoriya does not have one for all quirk. Isik Midoriya has a cat quirk. Dead Inko Midoriya. Bound family. Parental midnight. Parenso Ingenium. Midnight adopts Izuku Midoriya. Ingenium adopts Izuku Midoriya. Parental Eraserhead. Parental Present Mike. Present Mike adopts Shinzo Watoshi. Eraserhead adopts Shinzo Watoshi. OCs play a part in the story. OC insert. Hitoshi Shinzo replaces Minoru Mineta. Slow burn. Quirk discrimination. Kidnapping. Anks with a happy ending. Beta Red. Looks like Sir Naida gets to live. Shinzo Itoshi has one for all quirk. English isn't my first language. Summary. Izuku had the best childhood imaginable. Surrounded by love from his mom, he lived in a fancy neighborhood with his best friend Kachan. Everything was just perfect. Until it wasn't. Episode 1. Chapter 1. July 15th. In the quiet of the hospital room, Inko cradled little Izuku in her arms, marveling at his green curls that seemed to defy newborn norms. His head was with streaks of black woven through the vagrant strands, a constant reminder of Isashi, who was unaware of Izuku's birth. Inko's gaze shifted from his captivating hair to the cat ears he had. Then she looked at the rest of his features, finding solace in the resemblance he bore to her. His freckles were a mere image of her mother's, scattered across his cheeks like constellations in the night sky, and his round eyes, while darker, held the same soft and roundness as hers. After feeding him, Inka watched as the nurse gently placed Izuku in his crib. The crib only had his first name. She couldn't bring herself to give him Isashi's last name, despite the genetic ties. This child was not Hisashi's. And Inka was determined that he wouldn't be raised in heavy makeup and lies. Before the nurse could take her leave, Inka called out, her voice tinged with uncertainty. Yes, the nurse said. Inko hesitated, knowing what she must do to protect her child from a life she couldn't bear for him. But the pain in her heart, the confliction in her soul, it all weighed heavy as she navigated this delicate balance between the truth and love. This was once a man she deeply loved. He showered her with kisses and flowers, whisked her away on romantic dates in the city, and took her on long vacations to exotic destinations. Every gesture, every word of love, every expensive gift, spoke volumes of his affection and devotion. However, beneath the veneer of romance lay a darker truth. It began with subtle comments about her appearance, veiled criticisms that hinted at dissatisfaction. Slowly, these remarks escalated into actions that left physical and emotional scars, transforming the once idyllic relationship into a nightmare. Yet despite the abuse, the romantic gestures continued, each one followed by apologies and promise of change. I'm sorry, Inko. I'll try to be better, he would plead. Inko knew she couldn't let her son grow up in such an environment, marred by violence and manipulation. She couldn't protect herself, but for her beloved Izuku, she would move mountains. I don't feel safe going back home. I need you to call the police, she requested, her voice trembling with a mixture of fear and sadness. It was time to break free from the cycle of abuse and create a safer future for her son. Inko lay in her bed, her gaze fixed on the door, a sense of urgency gnawing at her heart. She knew it was only a matter of time before Isashi discovered she had gone into labor. The thought sent a shiver down her spine. She had to get to the protection services program before it was too late. She couldn't bear the idea of her son falling into Isashi's hands. In walked two men each excluding a different aura of authority. The first, a tall figure with vibrant pink hair, carried himself with a calmness confidence that immediately caught Inko's attention. 
Beside him stood a slightly younger man, with dark hair and a hint of stubble, his eyes betraying a mix of jitters and eagerness. Hello, ma'am. The pink-haired man introduced himself in a soothing tone. My name is Mamoru Ito, and this is my rookie, Namoyasa Sukuichi. We've been informed that you don't feel safe at home. Can you tell us more about what's been happening? Yes, my husband, he... I am scared he will hurt our son. All right, and does he hurt you, ma'am? Ma- Yes, he does. A lot. He... Almost killed me, Officer Ito. All right, we can open a case. Do you have family or friends you and your son... Izuku? Izuku can stay with. No, we have no one. Inko's heart raced as Ito scribbled notes in his notepad, his demeanor a mix of professional composure and focused determination. All right, we will try to see if we can build a case to arrest him. He began, but she interrupted him, her voice twinged with urgency. My husband is a criminal, Inko declared, her eyes meeting Ito's with an unwavering terror. I could testify against him. Ito glanced at Tsukuichi, whose eyes widened as he nod. All right, what criminal activity does he engage in? Ito inquired, ready to delve deeper into the dark world that had ensnarled Inko's life. He's a villain. Viper. Inko answered without hesitation, the weight of her words hanging heavy in the air. Ito paused, setting his notebook aside as he turned to Tsukuichi, silently exchanging a knowing glance. Before he could respond, Inko interjected once again. I'm not telling you anything unless you can ensure the safety of me and my baby. Inko assured firmly, her maternal instincts overriding any semblance of fear or hesitation. You do not have to worry. Until he is put in jail, we will... Ito's attempt to reassure her was cut short as Inko continued, her words amident. With all due respect, Officer Ito, that will not be enough. My husband knows people. Even in jail, he could send someone to hurt us. Inko explained, her eyes reflecting a mix of determination and fear. No, what I want is for me and my son to have our last names changed and to be relocated to another part of Japan. I will not risk my son's safety. If you can do that, I can tell you everything I know. And believe me, I know a lot. With that, Inka poured out her knowledge, recounting every detail that could aid in apprehending her husband and ensuring her and Izuku's safety. She was moved to a secure part of the hospital, the hero wing. Inka was surprised by the decision to place her here, but liked knowing heroes were all around her. It gave her a sense of security. Inko's return home was not typical. Instead of walking through her front doors, she found herself escorted by a police car, leaving behind everything she owned. The fear of Hisashi tracking her down loomed over her, forcing her to start anew with only the essentials. The journey was long, but Inko found solace in the company of Ido and Tsukuichi. Their banter and jokes about moving to Masutafu to assist Inko lightened the mood offering a glimpse of camaraderie amongst the serious circumstances. Upon arriving at her new residence, Inka was welcomed with the house for her contributions in catching and apprehending almost all of the villains from the Dark Syndicate. The house was spacious and located in a safe, welcoming, and rich neighborhood. The living room was boasted a cozy brown couch and a state-of-the-art flat-screen TV, provided a comfortable space for relaxation. The kitchen was fully stocked, all the pans and utensils needed for cooking there for Inko. The fridge was filled with fresh groceries. The fridge was filled with fresh groceries, a stark contrast to the uncertainty of her previous situation. The house had five rooms. One room had been transformed into a nursery, busting with vibrant colors and adorned with a crib changing area, and a small rocking chair nestled in the corner. It even had its own fridge designated for storing breast milk, a thoughtful touch that brought tears of gratitude in Inko's eyes. 
The room adjacent to the nursery was a simple yet elegant bedroom, featuring a comfortable bed, a functional dresser, and a desk with a chair. The remaining two rooms stood empty, awaiting the possibilities that the future might hold. As she bid farewell to Ito and Tsukuichi, gratitude filled her heart. She sat in her new home, gazing down at the peacefully sleeping Izuku. I love you, my sweet baby, she whispered, her voice filled with tenderness. You will have the best life. I promise you that. With renewed hope and a sense of security, Inko embarked on this new chapter, determined to build a brighter future for her and her beloved son. I am so happy to be able to do this and to introduce my very own fanfic. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that wonderful? I will be uploading both the written fanfic and the actual podfic side by side. So while the fanfic was uploaded around the same time as the podfic, you know, you get to either read it or, you know, listen to me read it for you or do both. Whatever it is, you have fun with it. I am so happy to be able to do this. And I will be uploading regularly. For now, there is only one chapter and hopefully there'll be another chapter next week. But it does take me some time and I'm also work, uh, focusing on work, social life, and also uploading videos for you guys. So please stay with me and I will try to update this as much as possible. And hopefully by the end of the year, I have all the chapters out. It's going to be easy. It's going to be basic. It's going to be, I already did the first chapter. So the hard part is done. I've always had a hard difficulty time starting fan fictions, specifically starting anything written wise. But yeah, I am so excited and happy. Also, this will be the only notes in this series. Well, there might be one or two other notes around the lines, but for the most part, unless it's a big announcement that I need to make, I am not going to be doing notes. I'm not going to tell you my opinions. It's my own fan fiction. I'm not going to be telling you my theories on what's going to happen next. I already know what's going to happen next. And I'm not going to tell you my psychology corners. I'm not. You guys are going to have to figure that out on your own. In fact, I'm passing down the torch to you guys, my raindrops. Down in the comments, I would love to see your reactions, your opinions, your theories on what's going to happen next. All the psychology corners that you could muster up down in the comments and I would happily reply and text back and see and interact with you guys. I am so happy to be able to do this. This is such an exciting experiment. Experience. Now, you will know that chapter two is going to be uploaded because I will always do a premiere on this series. This series will always have a premiere. I want to have that experience where you guys get to see each other's reaction live in the in the live chat in the live chat i'm gonna have so much fun seeing that specifically in certain chapters certain chapters are gonna be a little more fun seeing you guys react to live you know see you know that <gasps> no way you didn't you know because certain chapters i'm so excited to write because you know you guys are gonna be crying and i'm going to be you know happy and laughing like for example i can't wait for chapter three I wonder what your guys' reaction is going to be to chapter 3. Or maybe even chapter... Hmm. What chapter should I warn you about? What chapter? Mm, let's see. Let's see. Chapter 87 is one that I'm going to be very interested in you guys reacting to. There's some chapters and some mystery and I'm, I'm so excited. I don't know if you could tell. I'm trying to hone down my excitement because if I don't, I will be talking at 30 minute, 30 minute, 30 minutes per hour. Does that make sense? No, 30. No, I'd be talking really fast. Okay. I can't articulate my words right now. So as always, my raindrops, make sure to eat, sleep, drink water, take your meds, have a wonderful day or night. Link to my Discord server and socials are down in the description. Subscribe to see more of my content, and thank you so much for watching.